are you going? So, this was one of those myths that I first heard when I was a little kid, around the same time as other unlikely stories, like if you feed rice to birds, their stomach will explode, or if my dad leaves the house and never comes back, I'll become a strong, stable, and independent man. But this carrot finger myth is probably the most intriguing and has become one of the most popular pop science facts regurgitated by drunk dudes and magazines in doctors' waiting rooms. And I reckon it's probably because it sounds bizarre and crazy and is almost untestable. Like if I told you that if you shatter your toes with a hammer, it sounds a little like the D major scale, you would be skeptical, but you probably wouldn't try to attempt to prove me wrong unless you hate yourself. And it's the same thing with biting off your finger. When you hear this story, you don't really believe it, but at the same time, you kind of don't want to look like an idiot by saying, no, you can't, and then biting off your finger in front of your mates. And I find it hilarious that we seem to be more in touch with the body of a root vegetable than our own physical selves. So then you think, well, someone must know the answer. Maybe Gollum. Or like an Albanian people smuggler. <laughs> so you decide to turn to the internet for closure. But that makes it worse, as you realise it is filled with hundreds of curious people just like you that aren't quite enthusiastic enough to sacrifice a finger. And eventually you find some people that claim to know the answers, like this wiki user or Amy Evans from the extremely popular website I'm a Scientist, Get Me Out of Here. And she's extremely certain that this myth is indeed true, but I'm kind of skeptical of her confidence. How does Amy know that you can bite off your finger as easily as a carrot? Was she born with six fingers? Or does she somehow have access to a large base of human volunteers on which she is able to conduct experiments on in order to answer questions from strangers on the internet? Amy! <laughs> I tried to contact Amy or the folks over at I'm a Scientist Get Me Out of Here to let them know that I was onto them, but I wouldn't tell the authorities if they would give me access to their horde of human guinea pigs, or at least allow me to buy some, but they're not giving up their stash that easily. So the general reason that people on the internet seem to think that this myth is true is that our mouths are physically strong enough and could easily bite through our fingers like a carrot, but our brain says, wait mate, don't do that, you need your fingers. So it looks like I'm going to have to come up with a way to bypass my brain and legally bite off a finger. And I'm hoping that testing this out should be fairly easy. All I need to do is just get cutting surfaces, then place a carrot inside, and then my finger inside, and measure how much force it takes to cut each of them off. And I kind of don't want to use a blade as it doesn't really represent a human mouth. So I ordered a human skull from my second favourite website to get human bone, www.ilovepolpot.com which has a suspiciously quick delivery time. So, this is the plan. Scale goes like this, with weights on top of it. Then I just place a carrot inside and keep stacking on weights until it cuts through. Then, I also need a fake human finger to do the same thing with and compare them. I don't really know how I'm gonna get a fake human finger. The supermarket only had fingers of fish, which are beautiful, but not helpful. So I'm gonna have to make one. Now, I don't want to buy any expensive silicones or anything, so I'm going to attempt to make a mould of my finger out of candle wax. Which turns out to be a pretty stupid way of making a mould, as melted wax is hot and burns you. And I need to just keep dipping my finger back and forth until I build up a thick enough layer to form a mould. And I, I don't know how thick it's meant to be, or, or, or how, how it's going to make it, and I don't even know if this is going to work. So this took like 10 minutes to make, and looks horrible, and burnt my finger. So then I thought maybe a quicker alternative could be casting all my fingers in plaster, which I thought would be easy. And I kind of left my hand in the plaster a little too long. Oi, Oi come here. What do you want? My hand's stuck in the plaster. Stuck in what? Stuck in plaster. Why is your hand in plaster? Well, it's casting my hand. Is it stuck there? Yeah, it's stuck. What are we gonna do? I don't know. I reckon you can get a hammer from the garage. I think I think you used it last anyway. <laughs> Which hammer do you want? I don't know. It's actually getting hot. It's like it feels hot. This is like not hot enough to burn me yet, but it's getting hot. Oh, just careful, careful, because if it goes through you're just gonna shatter my fingers. Yeah, well. At least you'll be free. Don't do it. Don't do it.
Alright, so that is probably why people don't use wax or plaster for moulds involving human skin. So I decided to not be a stingy dickhead and buy some of the real stuff, called alginate. So then I'm just going to grab some of my mum's wine glasses to use for the mould. And I should probably confiscate the bottle of wine as well, actually. And then carefully put my finger in and rinse and repeat. So I'm going to be using liquefied horse, also known as gelatin, for my finger flesh substitute. And to replicate the finger bone, I'm going to be using a wooden dowel, some pencils, and an ox tail, which has little bones in it which are very similar size to the bones in human tails. And this is definitely up there as one of the grossest looking things I've ever bought. So I'm just going to leave my fingers in the fridge to set. Um, can you please not drink all the finger wine that's in the fridge? What? And what kind of monstrosity have I given birth to? It kind of looks like the human version of an eye eye, something that no one should have ever made. And for some reason, I find it a little bit beautiful. All right, eating time. So I'm just gonna put this hat I made on the skull, which will allow me to stack the weights. So for appetizers, let's try the fingers of fish. These are de delicious, by the way. Uh, thanks, that's why I bought them you reckon, for you. You reckon I could get some sauce with them though? No, we need, we need to do the experiment. Look, you give me some sauce and then I'll do the experiment. All right, but you're only getting home brand tomato sauce. Oh, thank you. And I don't have high hopes for the fingers of fish. And the finger of a fish took two kilos to bite through, which isn't very much, probably because I purchased the deboned fingers. All right, so let's try the carrot which was surprisingly easy to break. It took around 10 kilos. Then I'm gonna do the freaky tail finger thing. Look at that, it's not budging. I stacked 50 kilos on top, and even though I had the teeth placed in the joint of the bones, it still didn't break through and only made a little mark. Also, I accidentally gave my fingers frostbite, so the gelatin didn't really provide much resistance. And then I just tried the wooden dowel as well to be safe, and it could also hold up to 50 kilos which is actually all the weights my scrawny family has in the house, which is very close to the average bite strength of a normal person. And I did think this might happen. So as a backup, I ordered another pair of jaws, which I didn't realize were gonna be giant. And then I did what everyone with a healthy dental care regime does. I filled them with concrete so I can drop a big weight on them. And I know this ain't very scientific, but I kind of just want to see a mouth chomp through a finger. I don't really know what this shows and I probably should have let the concrete dry properly before testing this out, but it did manage to bite almost all the way through. There's just what? a little bit of skin or something hanging on. And I really, really wanted to see like a clean chomp like you would get from scissors or an ax. But sadly, most of us don't have mouths like that and bones are pretty tough. So here are the incredibly scientific results. The finger of a fish took 2 kilos to bite through, a carrot took 10 kilos, and a human finger took uh, uh, th this many. Actually, I kind of just thought of a super easy way that I could have tested this, Actually, unless I'm an idiot. I, I might be an idiot. Someone please tell me if I'm being an idiot. So if I put the carrot and my finger in my mouth at the same time, and then I make sure my bottom and top teeth are on them, then when I bite together, there should be the same amount of force applied to both. And it does hurt quite a bit and made a mark in my skin, but the carrot snapped well before my finger did. And the more you think about it, the less this myth makes sense. Can you imagine what life would be like if you had fingers as weak as carrots? Oi. So carrots and fingers are nothing alike in terms of their strength, color, or suitability to be eaten in a salad. Screw every magazine, B-list celebrity, and person on the internet that circulated this obviously fake and ridiculous myth. Somehow we have allowed scientists like Amy Evans to create fake stories and trick us into thinking our bodies are as fragile as a vegetable. Kids, the next time you hear this myth, go ahead and give your middle finger a good bite and tell Amy she's a dickhead. And to give me some of those slaves. 
thank you so much for watching. If you like that, make sure to subscribe and check out some of my other stuff.